In this lecture, we will define what is meant by median of a set of numbers, and then we will talk about two randomized algorithms for finding the median of the set of numbers. The first method makes use of recursion, and the second method makes use of sampling. Let's start. So consider a set S with n distinct numbers. If we sort the set S, the number that lies in the middle is called the median. Or in other words, if it is the n over 2 smallest number in the set, then it is the median. So this lecture concerns with how fast can we find the median? Or in general, we may slightly relax the problem so that we want to find the kth smallest number in the set, given k as a parameter. Now to find the median, actually, we can do so in deterministic order n time, so we do not need to have any randomization. But then, the hidden constant of this big O is large, it is 20. So the deterministic algorithm guarantees that with less than or equal to 20 times n number of comparisons, then we are able to find the median of s. But if we make use of randomization, can we do better? So let us take a look of our first method. This method adapts the randomized quicksort that we have introduced before. It is really, really similar. So let's see. So first of all, we are going to select a number randomly from the set S. We call this number the pivot. So we let x to denote such a number. What we are going to use with this pivot is we are comparing every number in the set S with x so that the remaining numbers are divided into two groups. One group contains numbers smaller than x, and the other contains number larger than x. And after that, we are, rec we are going to find the desired number recursively in the group that contains it. So let's see an example. So for instance, suppose the set S is equal to this, 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 these numbers, so they are arranged randomly, okay, non-sorted at the beginning. So let's say 1, 5, 6, 2, 3, 4, 7. And our target here is to find the fifth smallest number in this set S. Suppose that when we do randomization, we pick a pivot randomly from it, and let's say we pick 3 as a pivot. So what we are going to do here is we compare each number in S with the pivot 3. So we compare 1 with 3, so 1 is smaller, 5 with 3, 5 is larger, 6 with 3, 6 is larger, and so on and so forth. So in the end, we obtain two groups. The first group contains these two numbers, and then the second group contains these four numbers. Now since we are going to find the fifth smallest number, so we know that these two numbers should not be the fifth smallest number. So it's not inside this group. 3 itself, we now can determine that it is the third smallest number because there are exactly two numbers smaller than it. So 3 is going to be the third smallest number. So in that sense, the fifth smallest number must be in this larger group. And then in this group, we are going to find the second smallest number. So we are going to solve the same problem, but on a reduced size of the set. So the pivot, if it lies between the middle portion, let's say, if the pivot lies between 1 fourth and 3 fourth of the sorted S in this region, then what will happen? It means that no matter the, the desired number is in which group, whether it is in the group greater than the pivot or in the group smaller than the pivot, then in the subproblem, we are going to take away one of the parts. So in, the sense, in, in this case, we will see that after taking the pivot, if it is luckily in this group, 
the problem size will drop by at least a factor of 1 over 4 because at least 1 over 4 of the original set S will not be seen anymore. And then actually, the middle portion is quite large. It, it, it contains like half of the numbers of S. So the chance of selecting a pivot in this blue region in the middle part is 1 over 2. And what does that mean? It means that the problem size will drop by at least a factor of 1 over 4 with probability 1 over 2. So it is like, if we are lucky, then it drops by 1 over 4. And the chance of being lucky is 1 over 2 each time. So suppose that we use Tn to represent the expected number of comparisons. So roughly speaking, we can see that because the success probability is 1 over 2, so on average, it takes two runs to get a success. Okay, so we after two selection of the pivot, so we select the pivot, compare everything. Maybe it is not that good, but then we select the pivot again, then we compare with everything, then we are expected to select a pivot in the blue region. So it already makes use of two end comparisons, but then the problem size will drop by a factor of 1 over 4. So it, the remaining problem size will be at most 3n over 4. So we get a recurrence about Tn. And solving the recurrence, we will see that Tn is at most 8 times n. And obviously, this is better than 20 times n in the deterministic algorithm. But notice that the Tn value here is only the expected number of comparisons. So in the worst case, we may be really, really, really unlucky, and we may be using up to n square comparisons in total. But that, that was not really a, a very accurate analysis. This is just giving us an idea why this recursion method works. So let us now try to get a more precise analysis, similar to what we have done when we analyze the randomized quicksort. So with a loss of generality, we assume that the n numbers in S to be sorted are 1, 2, 3, up to n. And we define the random variable xij to be equal to the number of times that i and j are compared. So the expected number of comparisons is the same as before. It is equal to the summation of all the possible cases of i and j of the expected value of xij. So this is actually by linearity of expectation. Now we have a key observation here. So first of all, xij is either 0 or 1. So any two numbers i and j, they are either not compared, or if they are compared, it will be at most once. They are compared when i or j are selected as the pivot. Now we have further observations. Suppose that we are finding the kth smallest number. Now in the first case, suppose that i is less than j, and then these two numbers are both smaller than or equal to the kth smallest number. Now when will xij be equal to 1? So when will i be compared with j? So using the similar logic or similar reasoning as before, we see that i and j are compared if among i, i plus 1, up to this k, i or j are chosen as pivot first. Now notice that when we are talking about randomized quick shots, we are looking at i, i plus 1 up to j, but here we are looking at i, i plus 1 up to big K. The reason is that if we are selecting the numbers between j and k as a pivot, then after this selection, then we will see that i and j will be distributed into a group that does not contain the desired number k. And in that sense, there will be no further comparisons. So there will be more chance than before than the randomized quicksort that i and j will be compared. 
There are two further other situations. Now this time, suppose that i, j are both greater than or equal to k. Then i and j will be compared if among the numbers k, k plus 1, up to j, r or j are chosen as the behavior first. And finally, if i is less than k, but j is greater than k, then this is the traditional case. i and j will be compared if among the numbers between i up to j, r or j are chosen as p for first. Now based on the observations here, we can calculate precisely what is the expected value of xij. So let's see. So first of all, let us analyze the case when i, j are both less than or equal to k. We claim that if we sum up all the expected value of x, i, j under this scenario, under all the cases where i, j are both less than or equal to k, then this summation will be less than 2 times k. So how do we do this? So for instance, so, so here we are trying to com compute this summation by fixing i and see what will happen. So if we fix i and compute all the related term of i j such that j is between i and k, then we are actually computing this expected value of i i plus 1, i i plus 2 up to i k. And then we will see that using our previous key observation, the chance for i and j compared is among all these k minus i plus 1 numbers between i to k, i, j are selected as p for first. So this expected value will be equal to 2 over k minus i plus 1. This expected value is also equal to 2 over k minus i plus 1, and so on and so forth. And there are actually how many terms there? There are actually k minus i terms there. So in the end, if we add them all together, it will be strictly less than 2. And then the summation here looks for all the i that is less than k, right? So there are k minus i and k minus 1 such values. So in that sense, it is less than 2 times k minus 1. So for simplicity, I just write it as less than 2 times k. So this is the first scenario when i, j are both less than or equal to k. And similarly, for the other situation, when i, j are both greater than or equal to k, then the summation of the expected value of x, i, j will be less than 2 times n minus k. We actually proceed with exactly the same method as the previous lemma. So, so for a fixed j, the sum of expected value that is related to this j is less than 2, and there are at most n minus k values of j to consider, so this is less than 2 times n minus k. And finally, we have the final case to consider, where i and j are on different sides of k. Now, so for this case, we will see that for any ij in, in such a situation, expected of xij is equal to 2 divided by j minus i plus 1. So this time, we look at everything as a whole. So we will see that there is one case such that we are going to multiply by 2 over 3. So this is happening when i is equal to k minus 1 and j is equal to k plus 1. So in such a case, then it is multiplied by 2 over 3. And there will be two cases to multiply with 2 over 4. It is when i is equal to k minus 2, j equals to k plus 1, so this is one case, or the other case is i is equal to k minus 1, but j is equal to k plus 2. And similarly, there are at most three cases to multiply with 2 divided by 5, and so on and so forth. So if we sum up all these terms, each of the term here is less than, less than 2. This is also less than 2. This is also less than 2. And there are at most n terms here. So in total, it is strictly less than 2 times n. So in summary, 
the expected number of comparisons in the first method is less than 4n. It is very easy. So we just add up all the time sets we have. So for the first situation, the number of comparisons is less than 2k. For the second situation, so this ij both greater than or equal to k, this is less than 2 times n minus k. So these two adds up to 2n. And for the final situation, ij are on different size of k, so it is less than 2n in total. So if we add everything up, so it is equal to 4n. Now notice that this is, uh, this is smaller than 8n. So we are having a tighter analysis as our rough idea. Let's take a break.